Hi, my name is Isla Ibrahim, and I am a junior at the East Bay Met School. Hi, my name is Amy Monroy, and I'm a junior at the Unity Building at the Public Street Campus. And this is our research wrap up on our project titled, How do the racial and ethnic background of students and teachers affect student teacher relationships within the classroom? All right, why this project? Going back to the very roots of this project, our only guidelines were that it had to be on fault in the American education system. Upon first meeting with our research team, which consisted of Lila and, and I, along with our mentor Essence, we immediately decided that we wanted a project that we could instill passion into. That was something of, that was about something we cared about. So in an effort to decide what we were going to be researching for the next 10 months, we tried to find commonalities between the three of us and realized that we were all women of color that had been in white majority education at some point. The weight of identity. I personally am a firm believer that there is always something, whether obvious or not, that can cause strangers to find themselves intertwined in the deepest of ways, and as a result, not be left strangers after all. Oftentimes, I've found that this is something, that this something is an aspect of our identities. So much of this project for us was rooted in identity, so it was important for us throughout it all to step back and remind ourselves of identity and the weight that it holds in life. Identity is the compilation of various aspects of our being that in turn make us who we are. Identity is important because it plays such a key role in how we both present and are perceived in spaces. It determines how largely we are able to exist in said spaces and in turn how much we have to compact ourselves in order to be accepted. We see this especially in reference to things such as gender, race, and sexuality. How our own identities have impacted our educational success. As Lila said earlier, so much of this project is rooted in aspects of identity, especially our own. I was identified to have a learning difference early on in my education, which in turn othered me in classroom settings along with this. I am a mixed Honduran and Salvadorian and present in spaces as a woman of color. Because of these things, I was constantly being othered and outed and was consistently left feeling less than. Similar to Amy's experience, it was not very long after being put into education systems that I too was outrightly and effectively othered. Deemed an unconventional learner, though my younger self always seemed to identify this as incapability. I identify as an Afro-Arab. I'm, I'm a mixed Upper Egyptian and American. I attended school in Cairo, Egypt up until second grade and was at some point diagnosed with dyslexia. Although biracial, I do tend to present as conventionally Egyptian looking when presented in the right setting. So I knew what it was like to be othered academically, but that was about it. It was not until my family moved back to the States and I began attending public school in a very white suburban area that being brown mattered. This is to say that we both have experienced feeling as if we have to compact ourselves into something other than what we are because aspects of our identity label us as a minority and majority spaces. We know what it's like to be othered due to things we cannot control and hope to bring those experiences and emotions into this project in order to create something authentic that serves underrepresented minority students like us. The development of the project, how the pandemic affected our data collection and in turn helped us center student voices. We had originally planned for this project to be very data oriented and organized, but as the world shifted, so did our project. Our preliminary pre-COVID plan that we came up with in February consisted of sampling data from five students and five, te and five teachers from six different Providence public high schools and having them complete an online digital survey and then an in-person interview. However, like I said, we were not able to carry out our plans like we had hoped in the beginning, but this did in turn allow us to center student voices in our project. We ended up releasing a student survey to the general public via social media and had any students that attended one of the six schools listed currently in either 11th or 12th grade leave their emails in order to conduct an interview via Zoom. Originally, we had wanted to interview teachers as well and have a larger sample size, but our resources and the state of the world did not allow this to happen. Though in retrospect, we are both very satisfied with how we were left to collect data due to the fact that we we're able to answer our research question using a very authentic student voice that we as students of color are able to personally relate to. Conducting the interviews. 
We asked a series of five questions asking participants to walk us through their educational journey in relation to their racial and ethnic identity and overall relationship with classroom settings and all that entails. We concluded the data collection process with six student interviews, all of which look similar to the one you see on the screen. Questions included, have you ever been in a classroom in which your teacher is the same race slash ethnicity as you? And do you think the racial and ethnic background of students and teachers in your classroom has directly affected the way you learn? Utilizing identity to dissect and interpret data. After we completed our interviews and collected survey data, we had to decide how we were going to present the project and its findings to the public. While trying to decide how to do this, we were left again to turn back to the roots of the project and what truly made it authentic and caused it to, and caused it to thrive. This was our identities. Feeling reflective. A concept that I always turn back to when thinking about interconnectivity and how we as humans interact with each other is feeling reflected. When reflected, light bounces off an object in a way that turns another into itself when looked at from the right angle. I can honestly say that while interviewing students of color and hearing them dissect their experiences, I felt genuinely reflected. Most, if not all of the students that we interviewed had been in majority white education for most of their lives. Because of this and the fact that they had been so desensitized to being othered, a lot of students of color struggle to make the connection between their struggles to learn comfortably and the lack of people of color around them. It was only after subconsciously processing while answering the interview questions that they were able to begin to understand how deeply being a minority in white majority spaces affected them and their learning. What I found most value in while interviewing students of color was watching them have this world altering realization that perhaps the reason they failed to learn comfortably was due to the lack of people of color around them. That maybe their struggles were not just individual and dismissible, but perhaps systemic and valid, that they deserve to be a little kinder to themselves. Arts in the act of making. Throughout my entire life, art has been something that I've turned to in order to process and reflect. Upon this project coming to a close, I immediately turned to this habit in a way to help materialize our data in a way that not only helped help the research project, but myself as well. Upon discussing with Amy, we decided that I would be making a painting based off the findings of our research. The art of comforting and finding solace in one another. So, as the project comes to, comes to a close, we are left to answer the ultimate question. How does the racial and ethnic background of students and teachers affect student-teacher relationships in the classroom? We can only educate based on what we ourselves know, and because of this, all the education we give and receive is in some sense biased. This in itself makes it incredibly difficult to be comfortably taught things by people so very different from us. Our racial and ethnic background determines so much of how we are able to exist in spaces, whether we are allowed to be in the entirety of our muchness or are forced to compact ourselves into something unnaturally small. And when we ourse ourselves are not at all represented in our environments, it is our instinct to assume that because we are the minority, we are in the wrong. Throughout the entirety of the interview process, students would address how when their educators were white, the class content and learning materials given out would be extremely Eurocentric and in turn effectively other students of color. Yet there were these rare moments, ones they'll never forget, in which their educator was a person of color and they too felt reflected. When I think of, when I think of reflection, I think of solace and what it means to find solace, particularly in other people. As students of color, we exist in a space that rejects us in our entirety and we are constantly reaching for something to belong to. Even if in order to do so, we have to le learn to reject ourselves. But in those moments where our educators are like us, our authority is also our representation. There is someone there to stop us from reaching, to take our hand and place it in theirs and tell us that we are enough. And with that, we can conclude our presentation. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk.